In this video, we'll take a quick look at how Allure Test Ops helps developers and testers to be more productive with all kinds of testing. Especially, we're going to have a look at specific features and challenges that we face in projects. And the first one that we want to start with is the feature of live documentation and the challenge of keeping the tests up to date. Especially when we use automated tests and most of the information resides in the code, then very often it is not being kept up to date in some sort of documentation. And what Allure Test Ops does is that we have the connection with our test cases. So for example, we have our coffee project um, as an example project here with some example Java JUnit tests that here you can see we have specific data and metadata for our tests that are directly being mapped into Allure test ops and then being kept uh, up to date here. So for example, if we have a look at our Allure test ops overview and just go to test cases right away, all of the information here is derived directly from the tests and also being kept up to date as we change things. So another challenge and feature that we have is, well, the challenge of running tests, especially if many testers don't get access to the pipelines. And well, it is possible to integrate test ops with a variety of other tools and also your typical CI/CD pipelines and CI/CD servers. And then it's also possible to launch runs, so to launch launches from within Allure test ops that then run in your pipeline. So for example, here we have an example screenshot that just shows well specific jobs that are executed in Jenkins. So you can then start runs and also rerun particular uh, cases and subsets of your test suite where then of course you get the overview and the result then in Allure test ops directly as well. So this is nicely integrated, which especially helps teams that use this without an access to our di uh, direct CICD pipeline. Another necessity is to have some valid reports and results. And with this Allure test ops also really shines because we can get not just the results of individual launches and test runs, but also then some overviews, some dashboards, some trends that we have, we kind of have a look what's going on. So we always see the results and also individual test failures and the root causes for them. So it gives us a nice report and results overview. So let's go to test cases. The test cases that we have are derived from the well test code and our annotations. So here, as you've seen, we use the Allure uh, JUnit annotations that then we can annotate uh, for our tests and provide some more categories and metadata for which we then can use in Allure test ops. And this helps us a lot already. And we can see that here then in the overview of just the test cases, we can, of course, then further sort them or categorize them, for example, by the feature that we defined here in our test cases. Again, this is being kept up to date or we can use some test suites. So most of them are derived automatically just uh, from the package or we then define also some other filters or other criteria. We could have some other criteria to group that by or we have a filter, for example, UI tests or unit tests as we needed to. So all of this information is being used and again being kept up to date in Allure test ops. So let's go to the launches and then we can also launch an example uh, run here. So with the launches, these are individual test launches that have been um, triggered from our example project here. So let's do this real quick. We can uh, change something. So for example, we can change some test. Let's call this check headline message. So we just renamed a test case and then we would like to run our example pipeline. This runs locally in our setup here and will launch our unit test as well as some UI tests that are powered by Selenium and Selenide and then also use the Allure CLI to upload this. So of course you can also have this directly in your CI CD server and likely you will. But for the example, this shows it quite nicely that now we have a new launch that just appeared here for which we have 14 test cases that all passed. And in this overview here, we see, okay, now what is the case we have, for example, this test case that already has been renamed. So it's up to date, check headline message. This is the one we see what we have, no errors see some well duration and also a timeline that can be helpful if we have particular cases that run uh, really slow. So for our UI test, they just take a little bit more time. 
and then we can have the launch here that then shows okay what is going on what is also possible if we go to the topic of manual tests so sometimes um, that is required if we still have some test cases that are not automated or not automated yet it still helps us a lot to say we have some manual tests that then we can actually add either to a test plan that we execute or also manually if we um, launch our launch like that that we say okay in this case we still would like to have all of the manual tests that we can manually add to this launch so then of course we have to do this ourselves but just to have a full overview what we get then here is that we now have well not all of the tests are passed yet one is still in progress of course which is then we see this in the tree overview our um, test our manual test that hasn't been finished yet and what you can do you can set up all of these um, well particular test executions that then we have to do manually as a human so we can do this real quick for example we would need to check our website that we have here whether everything is correct so we can say okay all of these criteria is passed can we create some coffee for ourselves so let's run through this real quick does this work here so yes looks good we can mark all of that complete manually and say now this has been passed and now in our launch we see okay now all of the tests have been passed we can close the launch and then also in the list of our test cases we see our test case is now here up to date with the test case that we just changed in our launch and everything here is green and we see this in our overviews when it comes to integrations of Allure test ops, we already have seen that a lot of uh, tools that are very common are supported and in general Allure test ops has support for dozens of uh, testing tools in more than 11 programming languages so here we see some overview there so typically what you use is being supported and integrated out of the box into a lower test ops one more particularly helpful feature is what is called defects so that's quite interesting a defect is basically something like a known bug so for example if something fails for a particular uh, reason that already well is somewhat known and just hasn't been fixed yet so for example we could quickly uh, show this by changing something that modifies our welcome message and by rebuilding and rerunning our project real quick and once that is the case we can also re-execute the pipeline to see what is going on there and here we can see that already something changed and the UI tests are re-executed and now we have some failures which is actually uh, the case of what we uh, wanted for this demo and what we will see that now for the launch that we just have now well one test case is failing but it's not an unresolved test results because we already have an automatic mapping here that you can um, check out so what we have we have this failing test result and this links to a defect and why it is because there's some automation in the defect that then we also can have a look at so there is an automation about some specific message pattern which really makes sense so basically it means if a test is failing for a particular reason then this is a known defect and here in this case a welcome message needs to be fixed if that is still open so what we see here if that is the case that this test is um, failing for the same reason we see this being linked in our test launch so that is the case and it's not an unresolved test result it fails still yet but we know what that is that is a known defect these defects can be linked to jira issue which is also the case for us so there is some automated integration available here as well and we can have uh, this information so that's really helpful for these known defects the last thing that we quickly want to see is the dashboard section so we already have seen this default overview but of course you can create your own dashboards and your own widgets there is a specific query language available for which you can use basically all criteria that you have in your test cases and your test suite so with this you can get a better overview of what is going on and have some customized dashboards thanks a lot for watching